Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rowan, and today we are beginning the first in a series called Philosophy 50, where I explore and explain 50 different philosophies in that I have all contained in a book I own. I will uh, extrapolate the important parts, explain it, offer my own insight, and then share it with the airwaves, share it over the airwaves with you. So, without further ado, let's begin. Uh, this one's going to be going up either Sunday night or Monday, and I'm going to try and stick to that schedule one a week so you guys can uh, mull over what, what's been said and add your own opinions and thoughts because a lot of this stuff is kind of rich in detail and pretty interesting, honestly. So the first philosophy we're going to be going over in no particular order is called the brain in a vat, and the uh, it was created in 1981 by Hilary Putnam, uh, but the original idea for the brain in the vat comes from a philosopher named Rene Descartes in 1641, I believe. He wrote about a uh, malin gene, which means evil demon in French, uh, and it was essentially the same idea. So picture this, you were um, kid kidnapped by a mad scientist, evil scientist, evil genie, whatever. Put into a vat, your brain is put into a vat, hooked up with electrical stimuli and uh, impulses, and your entire world is recreated, you know, you're kept alive via your brain and your consciousness, because consciousness does come from the brain, we don't know what it is, but it is located there. So you are kept completely alive, you're in this vat, and uh, you have no idea that it's happening, you. you think it's the exact same life you lived before, except your reality is completely false, but uh, senses feel the same everything about your life feels the same you just don't know that it isn't real so immediately some people think well that's not plausible but actually it is plausible because we can do that with cells is it probable no it's not probable but it is plausible and it doesn't have to be probable to exist um, the idea here is not necessarily that this is truly existing it's more about the metaphor which I'll get onto in a little bit but since you have no idea that this is happening to you, there is no escape from the brain in the vat. Uh, you never, e even if you have the thought that this might happen, it's just an amusing subroutine of the simulation that's keeping you alive. It's kind of toying with you. Because even if you wanted to do something about it, you can't. You're a fucking brain in a vat. What are you going to do? Nothing. So there's no escape, and it undermines your reality as, as a concept. Descartes, th this is called being, this is called having a skeptic uh, philosophy. Now, Descartes, Rene Descartes, uh, escaped this kind of by creating his cogito ergo sum philosophy, which is uh, very popular, very well known. It means I think, therefore I am. It's in Latin, and he decided that because he can form thoughts uh, independently, he is existence. That is his reality, and that's another philosophy I'll, I'll get onto in another episode, but that's actually not a very firm base. It's kind of satisfying, but it's not very firm uh, in the prep, the proposed argument that this uh, that Putnam presents with the brain in the vat. So the idea, as I've explained to you, is that you don't know what your reality is. Now, whether that's true or not is actually not important, because it's more about the metaphor. The metaphor is that you never really know if you're certain of something. And there is another similar one called Plato's Cave, the Allegory of the Cave, which will be in another episode. That's a little different, but the idea is that you're never really sure what you're sure of. So the only thing you can be sure of is that you're not sure, <laughs> which is kind of a tongue twister, but it is interesting. And the application that this has, at least in my life, and I'm going to offer a little bit of my own, uh, my own opinions about this here, is that as much as we would like to, and I value knowledge quite a lot. Well, I value knowledge and then the application of it because I don't want to just know things, right? You have to be able to do something with it. That's what's important is doing something, not just possessing something. It's like having a bunch of money. Why? If you don't need savings, why are you collecting money? Are you a fan of paper? That's strange. Become a stamp collector. Don't collect money. Give it to someone else. So my application of this is that we can never really lay a claim to knowledge. As much as we'd like to, we can never fully lay certain claim to the knowledge that we pretend to have, that we think we have, that maybe we do have, but we don't know. And so when you can never really be sure of what you know, it kind of undermines your ability to 
propose and uh, suppose those ideas and concepts onto others. And the way that I apply this is essentially, you may be right, but you don't know if you're right. So don't shove it down other people's throats. And sometimes that's hard because sometimes in the real world when you're not being a philosopher and not just sitting back and thinking about the potential of hypotheticals, you know you're right and you know that your way is more efficient and that your way is better and it's been proven to be better and that you want to just tell another person essentially you don't know shut up let me do it which I do all the time and that just kind of comes from my personality type is that I'm right and efficient enough that in some regards I start to think that I'm right and efficient not all but most of the time certain people I respect their opinion no matter what but some I have a problem just dismissing what they say and that's not good so the way that I apply this is essentially even though you think you know you really don't know and I think that's what's important here so of course you're free to draw your own conclusions but I just wanted to share mine and um, I don't know if you have a way that you can confirm what you know and you, and you think that it's uh, infallible just like Descartes did please let me know because I haven't found one as of yet other than that it's more comfortable to just say yeah okay this is a basic reality I can accept that it's it's allows me to be more efficient and uh, more useful as a human but tr in truth we never really know it's kinda like the matrix so I wanna leave that concept with you guys I wanna leave my uh, extrapolations from it with you and I also wanna thank you for tuning in after these long months so uh, don't worry, I'm going to keep going from here, and I should be back next week. If you have any interesting thoughts, please share them in the comments below. Other than that, have a nice Sunday.